continuing with our lightning round, we're going to go ahead and move on to Rosella Tesh, the director of the Shadron Public Library here in Nebraska, although at the other end of the state from us. Um, and let's see, Rosella, I sh you should see the share your screen button. All right. Can you hear me? Yep. You're all good to go. All right. All right. So welcome to our journey of yoga at the library. Okay. Uh, okay. This is our library, Shadron Public Library, located in northwest Nebraska. As you can see, it's a Carnegie. It's rather old. It's a small library. And like many other libraries, we have a book sales twice a year, we have, and we are part of a BTOP grant, and we really love it. And here you can see one of, your, of our book sales and one of the posters of the grant. Um, our community, like I said, is located in northwest Nebraska. The population is 5,500, more or less. It's a little bit of uh, an unstable community with lots of people moving in and out because there is a college. The Shadron Pub Public Library was established in 1913, and we are currently working toward the renovation and expansion of our building. We really need something done. So about yoga. Yoga has a noun. It's an Hindi word derived from Sanskrit. It means union union of mind, body, and spirit, and also union of the individual with the universal. More about yoga. Yoga, it's very ancient. It's a philosophy of life. Um, dates back to the 2,500, 3,100 years ago. The first book written about yoga was written by Patanjali, and he wrote the Yoga Sutras. And it was a compendium of ascetic practices and thoughts. Um, in 900 Christian era, several scholars compiled the first written record of Atta Yoga, which is uh, the physical part of yoga. What is known, known in the Western world as yoga. As much of a yoga history in the West, yoga was introduced in Europe and um, United States yeah, at the end of 1800s by Swami Vivekananda. In the 1960s and 1980s, there were two revivals of yoga practices brought mostly by BK's, BKS Yenger, which is a very famous guru. And since 2001, the numbers of those practicing yoga in the United States has grown considerably. Actually, they said that 20 million people practicing yoga. How yoga at the library came to be. Um, in the spring of 2004, we were looking for some programs for adults to attach to our summer reading program for children. And our idea was to basically have something for parents to do while the kids were doing yoga. So I'm sorry, while the kids were doing the summer reading program. So we decided for yoga for a session and we had several adults and they were so enthusiastic they went to the back then director and they asked the director if we could continue with the program and she said yes and we have no stop since then. Um, one of the things that has to be noted is that um, in Shadron, there was already a group of people that were interested in yoga. And the college had students from India, Pakistan, and Nepal that had lived in the community while attending the college. And so there was already a certain interest there. Where we do, um, we usually do yoga in the children's room, but we have also used the outdoor. We have. Um, fence a little park. We do it every Thursday at 5 and that was the time picked by the patrons and most convenient. We use mats, plastic bricks and straps and the preparations are very minimal. We clean the floor, the carpet and we move the furniture. 
Okay, this is the children's room every day. And this is another part of the children's room where we do the program. And here it's when it's transformed into the yoga room. Believe it or not, we have accommodated up to 12 people in this place. There, um, as myself and one of the people usually come to do the yoga, and we are doing one of the warrior poses, it's warrior two. And this can give you a little bit of an idea of the space. And um, here it's uh, on the other side, still warrior two. More poses. And you can see the mats we use, that we have acquired those mats. Uh, the investment is really minimal. This is actually warrior one. Those are our balancing poses. So this is a famous three. The famous downward dog. And here we are upward dog. Yoga challenges the body beside the mind. And uh, to further challenge the mind, we have in our collection books, DVDs about yoga so that people can check it out and bring it home. And yoga session at the library consists of 10 minutes breathing and centering exercises that is done to bring the mind to a focus, forget about daily problems. 10 minutes stretching, um, we want to have the body supple for the exercises, followed by 10 minutes of warm up. 30 minutes asanas, and asanas are the postures. After that, we follow with five minutes of what is called dead man pose. And dead man pose, basically, it's a, a way to relax the body, let go of everything, and recuperate energies. And then we meditate for 10 minutes. So a total of 75 minutes, which is the normal thing for a yoga session. Equipment, we have six mats, nine bricks, six straps, candle holder for meditation, and of course, the candles. That is all the investment we have made in through the years. There are some people building their own equipment. Okay, what yoga has brought to us, uh, patrons that would not have come under any other circumstances have discovered our library. People from different cultures and nations have met during the program. People have formed friendships that uh, are lasting, and they keep going outside of uh, the setting of the yoga at the library. Some patrons have become volunteers and help with other programs, uh, such as summary program and um, story time for the little children. Sharon Public library was mentioned in a national journal for um, for years ago. People of neighboring communities have started to use our library and there are people who travel 30, 40 miles to come and do yoga here at the library. Community people have become more aware of other programs offered by our library. Uh, Namaste. I hope I have stayed in uh, in the time. And if you have any questions, all right. Uh, we have thanks, Rosella. Yeah. Hello. Uh, yep, yep, we're here. Yeah, we do have a couple of questions. One: Is there any cost involved? All for right. The patrons? Is there any cost involved for the patrons? No. Nope. Uh, to do it. It's totally free. Uh, keep in mind that if you go to a YMCA. It would cost $14, $15 an hour, and we offer totally free. And we have done that since 2004. Mm -hmm. So it's an incredible value for the community. Great. Now, who do you have teaching? Is this some sort of certified instructor? No, it's me. Um, according to Nebraska, yoga is a spiritual endeavor, so you don't have to have a certification. Mm -hmm. I make sure that people know that I don't have any teaching degree. But I have practiced yoga since I was 19. 
So um, I have taken also classes. I really would like to be able to certify it, but I live too far from any center that um, I can feasibly do it. Right. And so, yeah, I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Experience counts. <laughs> Hope so. <laughs> Um, okay, one last quick question. We're just about out of time here, but we do have a, a couple question. of questions about: Are there any ins um, concerns with insurance issues with people doing this kind of athletic, so to speak, stuff at the library? Well, um, for and like for any other programs, we are covered under the city insurance, so right. we that's don't like, have any. Other. Yeah, okay. anything that's no. at the library would be covered by the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Rosella. We really appreciate that. Thank you for submitting that. We've got a couple other Twitter comments coming through about how uh, they love the pictures especially.